Welcome to Montana Housing's Community Land Trust Training. Montana recently has seen an emerging trend for shared equity home ownership programs such as Community Land Trusts or CLTs. CLTs provide options to low or moderate income borrowers in underserved markets now and for future generations. This training will cover core components of a CLT including how they work, who is involved, and the utilization of the ground lease documents. So what is a community land trust? A community land trust is a nonprofit organization that holds land to preserve the affordability of homes, farms, and other real estate assets, making properties permanently accessible to people who are generally priced out of the market, and preserving public subsidy investments in the homes. The CLT leases land to low and moderate income buyers, while the buyers purchase the improvements at a subsidized price. The CLT supports the homeowners long-term, preserves the affordability of properties by entering a 75-year ground lease with the buyers of the improvements, and oversees resale restrictions that ensure the property will be sold at an affordable price in the future. In Montana, community land trusts are defined under 70-23-102-6 of the Montana Code Annotated. What makes a CLT different? The purchase of CLT properties differ from traditional purchases where the homeowner purchases and owns the house and the land it sits on. In a CLT, the homeowner purchases the house but not the land it is situated on, but rather pays a lease fee for the right to have the house on the land. This lowers the cost of purchasing the house generally by 20 to 30 percent below the market rate. Other differences include the CLT and homeowner entering into a long-term agreement called a ground lease to preserve the home's affordability. The homeowner will accumulate a restricted amount of equity from ownership of the home. With most CLTs, homeowners are provided with a maximum resale price that they can sell their home for, based on a simple interest per year of ownership. This resale formula is meant to balance permanent affordability with equity building opportunity. And long-term use has its advantages. The lease cannot be terminated unless the owner fails to pay the lease fees or uses the land in a harmful way. So who are the different parties involved with the CLT transaction? First, we have the nonprofit organization or trust entity that organizes the property for the community. The trust owns fee simple interests in the land, but not in the improvements. In the lease, they are known as the lessers. The borrower in the transaction will own fee simple interest on the house, but only a leasehold interest in the land. The borrower is known as the lessee in the lease. The lender qualifies the borrower for the initial loan. The title company is the third party entity that closes the transaction and ensures the recording of the documents. And finally, there is the investor, such as Montana Housing, who purchases the loan from the lender in the secondary market. As with any other Montana housing program involving the sale of bonds, there are federal eligibility requirements enforced by the IRS for the Community Land Trust Program. These federal eligibility requirements include income limits set by HUD, approved by the board, and change annually. Annual gross income, all sources, and before taxes or withholding is calculated for anyone who will be residing in the residence being financed that is 18 years and older. The annual household income is projected forward for the 12 month period following the date of application. Purchase price limits are set by the IRS and change annually. The IRS releases a revenue procedure which contains safe harbor numbers to be used in establishing average area purchase prices for all Montana counties to be used for mortgage loans financed with tax-exempt bonds. The qualified borrowers must occupy the home as their primary residence for the life of the loan. No more than 15% of the total area of the residence may be used in a trade or for business use. Each qualified borrower and any other adult intending to live in the residence must not have had present ownership interest in a principal residence at any time during the three-year period prior to the date on which the mortgage loan is executed. Exceptions to this include targeted areas, eligible veterans, 
or prior residences being a mobile home taxed as personal property. The qualifying loan must be a purchase money mortgage, meaning the loan must be for the purchase of the residence and not for refinancing an existing mortgage. And lastly, there is the remote possibility of a recapture tax if a borrower sells the home within the first nine years. The borrower's income is above the adjusted qualifying income at the time of the sale, and the borrower sees a significant gain on the sale of the property. If any one of these three criteria are not true, there is no recapture tax. Please have the borrower consult a tax expert for more information. In the Community Land Trust Program, each loan shall be made at 80% LTV or less and be in the first lien position in order to qualify for the non-insured option offered by Montana Housing. Applications for the non-insured option require approval in DU. Montana Housing will not accept refer with caution findings. When using DU, the lender must enter affordable LTV in the product description field in the additional data section on the online loan application, which will result in DU calculating the LTV ratio based solely on the appraised value for purchase transactions and not the lesser of the sales price or appraised value. Families using the non-insured option are required to contribute $1,000 from their own funds and they cannot be gift funds. No cashback is allowed at closing. Community land trust loans made with an LTV higher than 80% or where the borrower does not qualify for approval in DU may still be purchased by Montana Housing but must be insured or guaranteed by FHA, VA, RD, or HUD-184 with Montana Housing in the first lien position. The leasehold estate created by the Community Land Trust ground lease must constitute real property under applicable law. In all respects, the ground lease must be valid, enforceable, and in full force and effect. Lenders must ensure that any mortgage secured by a community land trust property and delivered to the Montana Housing is supported by the appropriate leasehold interest documents. All properties must be appraised according to Fannie Mae Community Land Trust appraisal requirements by an appraiser who is knowledgeable and experienced in the appraisal techniques namely the direct capitalization and the market deviation of capitalization rates that are necessary to appraise a property subject to a leasehold estate held by a community land trust. All borrowers must complete home buyer education and consent to early default counseling. Montana Housing Partners with NeighborWorks Montana and a network of nonprofit governmental and private sector agencies that specialize in first-time homebuyer services and loan products. Please note, non-occupying co-borrowers are not permitted in this program. Borrowers must qualify on their own merit. Because of the complexities of a community land trust program loan, there are several pieces of key information that Montana Housing will need at the time of reservation. As with any bond program loan, both the borrower's tax sheet and home buyer education certificate need to be uploaded at reservation. In addition to this, a CLT has the following documents which require staff review. A letter from the CLT confirming the eligibility of the mortgagers for the program. A copy of the title commitment must be provided along with a copy of the plat map of the property. And finally, a copy of the proposed new lease based upon either the National Community Land Trust Network 2011 CLT Network Model Ground Lease or the Institute for Community Economics Model Ground Lease. Review of these documents at reservation is paramount to correct any issues prior to the post-closing file review process, which can cause additional expenses for the lender and cause delaying funding. Rates can be reserved without these additional documents, however, Actual funds committed by Montana Housing will not occur until these documents are received. It's important to note that for Montana Housing financing, the term of the lease cannot exceed 75 years. Title insurance for community land trusts is handled a little differently from a regular transaction. And as such, there are additional requirements that we need to have in order for Montana Housing to purchase the loan of one. 
The title commitment must be an extended leasehold loan policy. List all the endorsements 9-06, 22-06, 8.1-06, 22-06, 8.1-06, 22-06, 8.1-06, 8.1-06 and including the 13.1-06 endorsement as part of the Schedule A, number 2B. Item number 3 on the Schedule A on a standard Alta title commitment must show both fee simple for the real property and leasehold interest for the improvements. Number 4 on the Schedule A of the commitment may or may not have the interest separated out between the fee simple ownership and the leasehold interest. However, on the final title policy, it must be separated out between the two and show the borrower with the leasehold interest and the CLT with the fee simple interest for the non-improved land. The real property descriptions, item number five on the Schedule A, must be broken into two parcels. Parcel one for the improvements or home and parcel two for the leasehold land. Now let's discuss the documents included in undertaking a community land trust transaction. What are the special documents involved with the CLT at the time of post-purchase review? These documents are required with the submission for purchase for all CLTs. The warranty deed of real property to the CLT is needed if the CLT doesn't already own the land. The land is often being transferred to the CLT from a developer or seller on the day of the closing. Simultaneously, the home is sold separately to the income qualified buyer. In this case, there will be a warranty deed for the land only that will be signed by the land seller before the ground lease can be signed. This document must be recorded. The executed ground lease is an agreement between a community land trust and a homeowner. This document will reference the lease itself and have attached the MBOH Community Land Trust Ground Lease Rider and the permitted mortgage agreement. If either of these two documents are not attached to and recorded in conjunction with the notice of leasehold interest or included with the lease, then it must be corrected. The notice of leasehold interest is the recorded public notice that there is a lease existing between the lesser, the community land trust, and lessee, the qualified borrower, on the underlying site for a specific amount of time, in this case, 75 years. It is not the lease itself, but the recorded notice that such a lease exists, since recording the full lease can be a costly endeavor, given the size and complexity of the lease agreements. A recorded warranty deed of leasehold improvements is from the community land trust to, to the qualified buyer. This will be the vesting deed for the improvements granted by the CLT. It should show the name of the CLT as the grantor of the deed, the borrower as the grantee, and contain the real property legal description where the improvements are located. A deed of trust acts as an agreement between the homeowner and a lender. It states not just that the loan will be repaid, but that a third party called the trustee will hold legal title to the property until the loan is paid off. It is the security for the loan and is recorded into public. The deed of trust in a CLT encompasses both parcels, the leasehold interest in the real property and the fee simple interest in the improvements. When reviewing this document, it is important to verify that both parcels are present in the description of the property, which is encumbered. Attached to the deed of trust is the MBOH uniform rider and other riders as appropriate for the property. The MBOH community land trust rider must be executed by the borrower and recorded along with the ground lease. This form removes resale restrictions as well as any other restrictions that may be included in the ground lease that could affect the value of the property from the Community Land Trust ground lease. The order of the documents recorded is extremely important. Without the documents being recorded in the correct order, in the event of a foreclosure, Montana Housing may not have the correct priority for a trustee sale and be forced to do a judicial foreclosure. While the title company ensures Montana Housing's lien in the first position, the title company might argue if they showed the documents in Schedule B that they are not liable for the error. First, the warranty deed 
for real property should be recorded prior to any other document to establish the right for the CLT to give a lease on the real property and sell the fee simple interest in the improvements. There may be times when this has been recorded prior to the transaction, but there are also going to be times when the CLT is taking possession of the land at the same time. Then, the fully executed lease or notice of leasehold interest is the next to be recorded in order to establish the right for the house on the land to exist for the borrower and, should a foreclosure of the deed of trust happen, the lease will need to still survive. The permitted mortgages agreement and MBOH Community Land Trust Rider must be included with the notice of leasehold interest. The warranty deed to leasehold improvements comes next as it transfers the house or improvements themselves to the borrower. The deed of trust is next, which is encompassing both parcels of the land and is the security interest document for the property. And finally, any other appropriate documents pertaining to the CLT, whether they are covenants or restrictions that are permitted under the MBOH Community Land Trust Rider, etc., will be recorded last. The title policy when issued must expressly confirm several key items. On Schedule A under Number 3, which is for vesting of the title, is the recording information of either the complete Community Land Trust ground lease between the lesser and lessee or a notice of leasehold interest giving public notice of the lease. Schedule A number 4 for the insured mortgage and its assignments is the recording information of the first position deed of trust on both the leasehold estate and the improvements. Schedule B part 2 should have the recording information of the permitted mortgage agreement including the MBOH community land trust rider both attached to the full lease or the notice of leasehold interest. There should not be any related CLT ground lease occupancy and resale restrictions, covenants, or agreements that run with the land and that have been recorded apart from the ground lease, except as may be permitted under the MBOH Community Land Trust Rider. The ground lessor's reversionary interest is subordinate to the Community Land Trust mortgage. The endorsement 13.1-06 for leasehold endorsement is a lender-only endorsement. It is intended for use with improved or unimproved residential property. This endorsement should be requested for any transaction where the insured estate is a leasehold estate. This endorsement adds certain important terms and conditions relating to valuation of the insured leasehold estate and additional items of loss that may be applicable in computing a loss covered under the terms of the policy due to the nature of the leasehold estate. Thank you for watching this presentation on Montana Housing's Community Land Trust Program. We invite you to visit our website at housing.mt.gov for more information. And don't forget to like us on Facebook.